We have any other questions or comments? You have another one? Okay. So where does the where does all the false prophecy come in? Like I noticed you were saying uh, you're speaking on peace. Is there a certain signs or ways you can distinguish the false prophecy from the real prophets? Like well, uh, like what we read in the book of Jeremiah, uh, a false prophet, uh, Jeremiah said, when, that, when, the, when the prophet of that, when the word of that prophet come to pass, you'll know the, whether they're false or true. And so if, if a prophet stand up and say, this is going to happen and it doesn't happen, it means that God didn't tell them that, which is what makes them a false prophet. Now, a, another form of a false prophet is somebody that doesn't preach God's word. In other words, a true prophet of the Lord is going to preach God's word, you see. And uh, I'll just give you an example. And, I, you know, I, I, just to give you an example, and this may help somebody who's listening in as well. Uh, several years ago, and I know people may have a problem with that, but I'm just going to say it because that's what the Lord gave it to me. Several years ago, we were having a family reunion in my, uh, you know, in my family. And... Uh, I I understood. Now, the Lord showed me in a dream that there were two people in my family uh, who was getting the family reunion together. Now, one, I, both of these people were preachers. And God showed me that one of these people was a false prophet. Uh, the, the one who was the false prophet, he was wanting to do a, a family reunion with everybody. Whether you're saved, unsaved, it, just throw them all in together. All of the ones that drink and smoke and carouse and do all of these things will be right there along with the Christians. The other one, family member, he wanted to do one with, with, with just Christians. Because, uh, you, know, you know the nature of family reunions, uh, there would be no drinking. Anything that wasn't, that wasn't God-like wasn't going to be going on there. And so the Lord showed me that, uh, that this one who was the false prophet, uh, he was doing it, you know, with, with he was the one that it took charge. And basically that this family reunion was going to take place. And uh, so while the Lord is explaining that to me, um, he, he showed me that it was going to be some people in my family who I was going to have to tell that to. They were going to have a problem with that. Because I was going to call him by name. Now, here was the thing. I didn't know that there was a family reunion being planned. I didn't know, you know, what God thought about those things concerning that. You know, I just had never thought about it. You know, family reunions, you know, and how they can be against God. And I didn't know any of the planning details or anything. I didn't find out who the false prophet was until I told the third person that the Lord had told me to tell. And, and then I understood better why I got the first two responses that I had gotten. And the Lord showed me in a dream uh, that the people were going to say, well, how is he a false prophet? He's so nice and, you know, and things like that. And, and in a dream, the Lord spoke to me and said, he's a false prophet because I didn't send him. I never called him to preach. And therefore, my spirit is, on, is not upon him to preach. So what is a false prophet? Somebody that God didn't send. And we read in, in the 28th chapter, Jeremiah, Hananiah saying, thus said the Lord, and the Lord didn't say anything. Not to him. See, so what was he getting that from? It, it's, again, is God senile? Did he tell Jeremiah seven years and then just lost his mind and told Hananiah too? See, so somebody was lying somewhere. And so a false prophet uh, their mark is always this, wanting to please the people. You see what I mean? That's, that's going to be one of the marks. The two years sound a whole lot better than seven. Or sound a whole lot better than 50. You see what I mean? And so, okay, well, I'm, and then they added show on with it. And so that's the mark of a false prophet. And so the Lord, in this whole thing about the family union, he took me 
Uh, in fact, let's go there to the fifth chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. The fifth chapter. Now, this, this is what he showed me. And, and again, this was not anything that I had thought of and ever related with family reunions. My thinking was, well, we're all family. We, you know, we, we were born naturally in the same family. Let's just all get together and, and, and things like that, you know. Uh, but here's the thing, and, and this is the way God deal with prophets a lot of times, is he will reveal something that that prophet didn't even know, but that prophet still had to go forth with it. And, you know, so it's like, while God is revealing things, you still learning, you know, you still learning. And so what what get a lot of false prophets off and a lot of even God's prophets off is they think that God is going to only reveal something to them that they already know. Well, it's in the Bible. And so I know that this is the case. But see, uh, a lot of times God will reveal something to help you out as well. You see. And so in the fifth chapter of first Corinthians, we're going to start reading in verse nine. He says, I wrote unto you. Now, this is talking about the man. Uh, Paul is dealing with the man who was sleeping with his daddy's wife. And so in verse nine, he says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company, not to company with fornicators. He says, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with covetous or extortionists or with idolaters. For then ye must needs must ye needs go out of the world. He said, but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. Mm -hmm. In other words, what is Paul saying and what is God speaking through Paul? I don't care how saved they are. Now, we already know we're not supposed to be keeping company with folks out in the world. This is what Paul is saying. But he's saying, but even if they call themselves church members and even if they're in the church don't keep company with them he said and don't even eat with them mm -hmm. now what's going on at most of these family reunions they're eating the problem is is that when when uh these things go on and you have holy sanctified people eating with unholy and unsanctified people mm -hmm. so you're sitting across the table from them they're drinking and getting drunk. They're smoking weed. They're doing all of these things. You know what you're doing? You're being partakers of their sins. That's right. You are telling them, I got the presence of God on me, and so God doesn't mind you being that way. Hmm. What is it that, that stops people from doing what they're doing if they're doing wrong, if you're sitting right there along with them? That's right. And you don't have to be doing it with them, but you're just sitting there. You are being partakers of their sins. You see, they have to know that there's a difference between the holy and profane. And they won't know that as long as they got a bunch of Christians compromising to sit right there with them. Right. Now, the Bible tells us to be not deceived. Evil communication, corrupt good manners. You see, evil communication, corrupt good manners. All right. Now, let's go down uh, to the sixth chapter of the book of First Corinthians. And we're going to read, start reading at verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither, our, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. You see that? And so what is he saying there? Uh, yeah, it's not against the law for you to go to family reunions. You know, with with folks who are out in the world. And for you to sit down and eat with folks that are out in the world. But he said that that's, is it God's will? Mm -hmm. See, again, that love. People say when they have a twisted mind, when they have a twisted 
mind concerning love, well, I, I love them, so I just go and sit and eat with them. If you truly love them, you're concerned about their soul, and you're not going to be partakers of what they're doing. Amen. You see? And so that's, 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 that's what a, 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 that was my example, what the Lord showed me that, that that false prophet was. And I found out later, again, who it was, because somebody named them. Now, this was in February of, of a year that the Lord had told me about this. Now, I didn't know that anybody was planning a family reunion. I didn't know who was planning it. I just knew what the Lord had showed me. And so this was in February. And in March, uh, you know, I started calling the people to tell them what the Lord had showed me. And because he, he told me to call three people to tell them. In fact, I got the phone conversations recorded and all of them responses recorded. And, and so I found out in that last conversation who it was that, that this false prophet was, you see. Now, I, I love him because he's kin to me, you know, and I, I know him, of course. And uh, but he's a false prophet because God didn't send him. And so since God didn't send him, he sees nothing wrong with with saved and unsaved eating together. Mm -hmm. He sees nothing wrong with with God's holy people being right there among the unholy. And in the sixth chapter, of, I think it's the sixth chapter of Second Corinthians, we're told not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, that's just not talking about married people. That's talking about your kin folks. Anybody that's an unbeliever, you're not supposed to be yoked up with them. You see, and many preachers, they take that as, oh, that's that's for married. No, that's just not talking about married people. So let me say this. You won't even marry somebody that's not saved if you're not hanging around them in the first place. Amen. You see what I mean? And so you see how we get ourselves in trouble just by disobeying that word? Mm -hmm. you, you don't just, you know, you're not in an arranged marriage nation, you know, where people just arrange in marriages. So you don't have to f worry about falling in love with the wrong person if you're not around them to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so, but see, false prophets don't understand that. False prophets, they have a miss, uh, they have a wrong idea about what love is. And so love says, let's just all sit down together and let's eat. Let's eat together. Let's all, you know, let's all hang out together. And after all, how are we going to win them over anyway? Or are you not going to, are you really preaching to them when you're sitting down there? No. Now, you ain't got to eat with somebody to preach to them. Amen. So you have to do it God's way. God says the way that, the way, how do people know that they're in sin? And how, do, how are people even ashamed of their sin if my people are hanging with them? If my people are right there with them. You see. And so that's that was God's way of showing me, you know, this this false prophet that was in my family. No matter how nice he is and he's a nice person, but God didn't commission him to preach. And so, uh, by the way, he also believes that um, that the apostles and prophets, that those offices are gone and that there are no more miracles being done today. There's no more healing today, no more miracles today. Well, and he preaches that. And the reason why is because when God didn't send you to preach, you're not going to preach this. When God didn't send you to preach, he's not going to allow you to preach his word. You're going you're gonna to be off. God's spirit has to be on you in the first place to preach his word. And so you can't say, well, I think preaching is a good occupation. That's a good idea. I love people. I want to see them saved. I, I just go and I just go to school and and make myself a preacher. And, and when you do that, God doesn't say, well, you know what? Um, I never thought about you being a preacher. So I, you, you, that's a good idea there. I'll go ahead and put my spirit on you so that you can preach. That's not how it works. If God didn't call you to preach, he's not going to change his mind about it. You know, just because you had a good idea and put his spirit on you to preach. No. So what spirit is it that's on you if God didn't send you to preach? The spirit of error. The spirit of error. And so that's how you know a false prophet. A, a, a good way to know them, of course, what Jesus, like what Jesus said in the seventh chapter of Matthew, is by their fruits you shall know them. Amen. By their fruits. Somewhere their life isn't going to be lining up with the word. And, th and they're going to be, uh, if somebody you know, have called themselves to preach, it's obvious that they're not wanting to please God. So who are they wanting to please but people? And so what kind of message are they going to preach if they want to please people? Messages that sound good. You know, God want to bless you. Becoming a better you. 
and all of these other, you know, things that people come up with. They're not going to call people out of their sins, not when, especially when people are comfortable in their sins. Mm 